Hello, welcome to this new watercolour course. Today we're going to be exploring seascapes using different wax resist techniques. Okay, here are some examples using wax resist techniques um, to create different moods and atmospheres and create different feels for the water and the sea. So here um, I've used sort of little wiggly lines and some little dots um, using wax resist technique. Here I've actually dragged the oil pastel along to create um, sort of lines and sparkles in the sea. Similarly here I've got lines and sparkles in the sea but using different colours so you get a different feel and a mood. And on this one here I've actually created lots more wiggly choppy marks in the sea um, to create a sort of more stormy feel and also actually use wax resist techniques in the sky to get a really sort of atmospheric moody feel to the sky with a light catching the tops of the clouds. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just show you now um, on a small piece of paper, we'll do a little sample, different sort of test sheet that you can use um, when you're planning and, and creating your images that you can refer to again, the different techniques we can use. Okay, so we're just going to be using um, a white oil pastel to create the wax resist techniques. If you haven't got an oil pastel, you could use an ordinary household white candle, sort of chop a piece off with a knife or sharp blade um, and actually use a piece of that. So all we're doing, we're going to be using the, because the wax on the, um, the paper, I'm using watercolour paper actually here, which has got a very slightly textured surface. Um, and this is going to um, create um, sort of go on the, on the sort of looks like ridges of the paper um, and act as a resist. The paint will just slide off basically, okay, from the wax resist. So the first thing we can do, I'm just going to show you, if you want to get something like this effect, where you're creating the sort of quite even small sparkles on the sea, okay, what you can do is you can use your um, oil pastel. You won't be able to see that because it's white until we paint it over. And just using this edge of the oil pastel, lightly drag along the surface of your paper. Okay, that's the first one. Then if you want to <clears throat> do something a little bit more like this, where you've got definite little dots of sparkles, like little diamonds in the water, where the light catches, obviously you can do little wiggly marks and dots. Okay, so I'm going to do that down here. And I'm just using the sort of edge here of this and I might just, just do a few little, little mark lines as well, just in between. So you've got a bit of a range, okay? Now the other effect that works very well is if you want to get a much more of a choppy sort of sea and also sort of some of the white foam on the waves. And so, so for, again, using just the edge here, um, I'm going to just draw some random wiggly marks. And obviously we see these once we paint over, it's a bit like magic painting. The only slight um, drawback with this is obviously you can't take it off once you put the wax on. You can't remove it, so you do have to be a little bit, a bit careful. That's probably a good idea why we do a test sheet as well, because you just have a little play and see what you can do and if it works or not. Right, so I've got some different marks here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mix up some paint. I'm going to be using, um, for this one, I'm, this is um, Prussian blue, which is a very dark blue. The reason I'm going to be using this to go over it is because it's quite dark. Um, I wouldn't normally maybe use this one, but it's just I thought it would show up better for the camera. So, okay. So now I'm just going to apply some paint over the top. So you want it dark enough to show, but not... Um, too thickly made up so that you want to be able to see your marks through. So I'm just going to go over the top and hopefully you'll be able to see the marks showing up underneath. Now hopefully you can see where the oil pastel has gone. You get these little little marks appearing. They're obviously get wax resist technique. Okay. 
Maybe a bit more water. And just on this side. you can see you've got a nice range of different sorts of marks that you can use for when you're planning um, what sort of painting you want to create and what sort of mood so if I just hold this up to the camera a tiny bit more hopefully you might be able to see so here we've got um, where I've dragged the oil pastel I mean it might be easier for you if you maybe do these in blocks you could write underneath what you've done so this is dragging the side of the oil pastel to create small sparkles this is using the edge to get little lines and create dots um, here I've done a range of sort of wiggly wiggly lines and marks to create much more of a sort of a choppy effect and here I've done some slightly denser marks as if you were getting sort of froth or where the waves are breaking and um, I'm there so what we're going to do now we're going to create our first painting so I thought we would for the first session um, I thought we would look at you creating a nice sort of summer summery scene. Um, this one is um, dragging the side of the oil pastel and also doing a few wiggly marks. And this one's slightly different where I've got you much more definite sort of dots and things here. So what we're going to do, we're going to be using phthalo blue, lemon yellow to create a little bit of um, more turquoise in the sea. Um, if you want a beach, you need to have some yellow ochre um, and you might want a little bit of burnt umber or raw umber or some, some type of brown for some of your rocks. Okay, I'm going to get my paints mixed up and then we will make a start. Now, just as a recap, to get these lovely sort of beautiful turquoisey blue greens that we get in sort of Devon and Cornwall here, um, in the sea, what your colours you're going to be needing to use are particularly phthalo blue, which is a lovely turquoisey blue. I've also got a little bit of Prussian there that was just left over for when I did my little demonstration of the wax resist technique, which I may put a little touch of on the horizon because often the horizon is much darker than obviously near the shoreline. Um, a touch of lemon yellow, which you will add to your blues to get these gorgeous, more turquoisey green shades. If you have a beach, you want a little bit of um, yellow ochre. And if you want some rocky areas, you will need um, a brown of some description. I'm using burnt umber or raw umber will be just fine. OK, um, obviously you can also mix if you want to get um, shades of greens. Obviously, you can mix yellows and blues together later on. OK, so the one of the things you need to decide when you before you start is um, obviously where your horizon line is going to be and your horizon line for a seascape needs to be straight that's the only thing really that really matters I tend to use the edge of a drawing board one of my boards just or a ruler just get a little line um, I tend to have it one about thirds rather than dead center um, one third up or down depending on if the sea or the sky is the most important element of the picture so for this one particularly the sea is more important so the sea area is larger than the sky so I put a little line here I've just also sketched very lightly um, a little line where the shoreline is going to be and a couple of little rocky, rocky bits okay I've not done hardly any sketching at all it's very very simple um, you also then need to think about what sort of sparkle you want on your sea. Do you want it to be fairly even like this, where so you're going to drag the, the oil pastel or your or your um, <clears throat> candle over a large area like that? Would you rather it was um, sort of almost like this, like a little runway of light coming through? Or something more like this, where you've got much more definite sort of big sparkles and, and dots of colour. All right. So that's you need to sort of think about that before you start so that you know what sort of marks you want to make. OK, so first of all, we're going to start off by creating our sky. 
obviously lovely summery sky so I'm going to use some of the phthalo blue and we're going to water down water and wet the paper first oh lots of water my brush and I'm going to wet quite thoroughly the sky area down to the horizon line okay the reason we're wetting our paper thoroughly is so that um, you don't get lots of brush marks but also the paint will flow nicely I usually wet it several times two or three times yeah that will do now these colors are very strong so what I'm going to do I'm going to very um, dilute some of my phthalo blue slightly with a little bit of water just so it's slightly more runny a mix I'm going to put it in there. You will need a piece of tissue or kitchen roll handy um, because what we're going to do is when we put the colour on you can lift out some clouds with your tissue while it's all wet still. So I'm going to put a little bit of colour on here. I don't mind if it's a little bit patchy. Down to your horizon line. Just put a little bit more on. It always dries lighter, so remember that. Okay, and what I'm now going to do with my tissue, just take a little bit of tissue, and we're going to lift out some clouds. So starting at the horizon line, I usually start at the bottom and work my way up. Just lifting out some lighter areas, then remember to get a clean bit of tissue, otherwise you'll be putting colour back on rather than taking it off. I'm going to work quite quickly on horizon line. Clouds usually build and bubble up on that horizon line. So I tend to usually put clouds on the horizon line. And then just think about the shapes. If you want any to firm up those edges a little bit more, you can come in and just beef those up a little bit. And I might just take a little bit out from up here. Just a few, I've got a little a suggestion of some clouds up here on the horizon, further away. Now clouds are usually soft and fluffy at the top and more flatter at the bottom. So, uh, you want to probably make the bottom, there we are, that's probably enough. Just a suggestion of a few clouds, one more. <laughs> there we are. And then we need to dry that off. I'm just going to show you, just lifting out some clouds. Dry that off and then we are ready to put the wax resist on the sea area and do some painting in the sea. Now I'm going to go for a combination of sort of a runway of light with a few wiggly lines but also some large sort of dots and sparkles in, in the water. So a combination of those two I really like. So I'm going to put the pictures there and do some marks. I've got my oil pastel and I'm going to sort of have my light coming sort of from here, I think, across. So I'm going to be dragging. So I've got a bit of light coming in that area. But also some dots. So I've got some large sparkles. Just off, breaking it up. Try not to make it too even, okay? So try not to um, just have a straight edge um, on your light because that, that will always look a little bit strange. Break it up, okay? You'll see even on this one, actually, it's broken up by lots of little, little tiny sparkles coming out, even though that main area is quite condensed, all right? So I'm going to break it up with a few little sparkles coming off. I'm also, I've got a little bit of a beach here. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be just putting in a few little bits of light or along the edge. Okay, just in a bit here. And then again here. And also, obviously I've got a rock in the water here. I'm just going to put a little bit of a mark around the base of the rock where you get some water 
lapping against the rock there. What you can do, you can hold this up to the light and the light will catch where you've got the wax resist and you better see it. Okay, so do that, check it's okay, and then I'll show you how to paint and add your paint to the sea. Once you've checked everything's okay and you, you want to sort of carry on with your painting, we're going to wet the sea area next. Um, again, this will allow your paint to run really nicely, hopefully, across the paper. I'm just going to paint around, I've got a little rock there, so I'm painting around the rock, leaving the rock dry. Um, and if you um, do that, the paint will travel where the paper is wet and the dry paper acts as a little bit of a boundary and it doesn't seem to want to go in that area, which is quite useful. So that helps you quite a lot when you're trying to avoid painting a certain little section. Right, right up to the shoreline and what I've wetted that thoroughly now. so. I'm going to be using some diluted phthalo blue first of all <clears throat> and we're going to be trying to do the horizon line first and that's the bit we need to be fairly careful of. Um, I'm just going to go up to there, a little bit too watery. Try and paint that horizon line fairly carefully. You can always put some land on the horizon line later if you want to. Um, Quite often, if it, if um, <clears throat> got a little blip there, you sort of something happens that you're not quite happy with, you can put a little bit of an island or something on there, a little bit of spit of land to cover it up, which is fine. <laughs> Works really well. Okay, so I'm just coming in, quite pale. Um, don't want to put it too strong, particularly by the shoreline. So we've just got a bit of colour on there, um, and what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to put a little bit of lemon yellow again i'm going to dilute this quite a lot because you don't want it to be bright green you just want to touch of turquoise so a little bit of diluted lemon yellow in here and then i'm going to add some more <clears throat> more of your phthalo blue just a tiny touch near the shoreline just here so i'm going to start to get a bit more turquoisey colors coming in hopefully Okay, that's a little touch there. Now I'm going to start build, building those colours up a little bit. So I'm going to go in a little bit stronger with my phthalo now. I'll work on that horizon line. And the thing that I really like to do now is to start turning the paper around and letting it run. I'm just going to show you this. So I'm going to turn the paper around. Oops. Right, and I'm going to put some colour in. And I'm going to let that run and you'll see hopefully that when it will let it run and trickle down and um, it will run off the, off the wax Come on. Okay, a little bit a bit of water on it to encourage it to run a bit get a little bit more color going on there And hopefully you can see it's starting now to run and trickle around the wax. Just going to get some more colour and put on. Lovely. That's it. You can see it going way <laughs> right to the other side. What we can then do, we can turn it around. You can see how we've got these lovely little rivets of colour. We can turn it around and actually put some colour on the other side and let it run the other way. <clears throat> Fine, this is always works more successfully than if you just try and paint the sea because you get lots of different colours in the sea, darks and light patches. A little bit more. Have to just be patient with this. Don't wiggle it around in all different directions, otherwise 
it will just go all over the place. Just hold it steady in the direction you want it to run and catch my drips here at this end. Just run your tissue along there on the edge of the paper if you don't want the paint. There we are. Starting to get some nice bits of colour going on. I think I need a little bit more. <clears throat> Put a tiny bit more lemon yellow through this foreground area, just a tiny bit to get some more greeny areas coming on. So I'm going to build that up and then I'm going to come back and just show you. I'm going to carry on just dripping paint. Okay, so I have actually finished painting this and I've dried it off with a hairdryer. And I hope you can see by letting the paint run and trickle, you get some really quite interesting sort of marks and undulations in the water. It gives it a bit of a sense of movement, which is quite nice. Now, if you've got a beach, um, next to paint the beach before you do the rock which I find is much easier you can just put the rocks on the top so again I'm going to where I've got my beach area oh I'll tell you what I'm going to do first I'm going to rub out any pencil marks quickly do that um because obviously once we've painted over those they're going to show so I'll just get rid of those and then I'm going to carry on right I've just quickly rubbed out um any little marks I had here on the shoreline I have actually got some wax resist over some of the lines so they I can't actually rub them out with my rubber but I'm now going to wet the sand area just here. Obviously going around any rocks that I have already drawn. I've got a little rock there, so I'm going to just go around that. Wet this area here. And I'm just going to be using a very, very diluted um, yellow ochre to give a little bit of touch of colour in that sand area. So a little bit of touch of yellow ochre, water it down thoroughly, just a little tiny bit of colour in the sand here. Take that right up to where shoreline. And just give a little touch of colour. You don't want too much, otherwise it will look too orange. Then what you can do is take a very slightly stronger mix and with the side of your brush just dry the brush off on a tissue. Um, we could just go over with a very slightly darker mix. Just a little, little touch of that. There. It's a bit too much to take it off the tissue. Maybe. There's a little bit of colour in the sand. The other thing you can do is actually just put a little bit of the sandy colour into the edge of the sea, um, just here, just a tiny touch there, and the other thing you can do is get some very very diluted phthalo blue that you used in the sea, and I just got a tiny touch just Right here on this edge, just so that it almost looks as if the sand's slightly wet in a couple of areas. There, it's just bring this out better. That's it. Hopefully, you can see that that just gives you the feel of sort of very slightly little bit of colour in this and the sand there. So what we can do now is we're going to put the rocks in. So I'm just going to be using some um, burnt umber. Uh, put it there. I've just got a little bit of rock in here. So I've got a little rock here that I'm just going to be putting in. Nothing too fancy. And I'm just going to take the edge off with the tissue just to give it a little bit of light on one side. There, and the same just here, a little rock on the beach here. Just 
and again I can just take a little bit of tissue and just lighten one edge very slightly there that just gives it a little bit of more sense of 3D that's better so put it on that side there we are that's better right um, you can if you want to in the water you can actually put a little bit of shadow underneath your rock which you often see particularly if it's near the shore just using a little bit of the brown there a little bit of shadow in the water and you've either got a choice you, if you want to you can put some more rocks here what I was going to do I'm just going to show you how to do something a little bit more like this, a little bit like a little bit of a sand dune or, or sort of a little grassy bank here on the edge um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mixing up a green okay so I'm just using a little bit of um, my phthalo blue you can either use um, some lemon yellow or the yellow ochre I've used the yellow ochre to be a slightly darker green here mixing up sort of a dull green and what I'm going to be doing I'm just going to be putting a little make a little sort of grassy bank here and then I'm going to be adding in some colours and letting them blend a little bit so I'll add in a little bit of the yellow ochre I'm just going to a little touch of phthalo blue mixed in with my green there we are just so I've got random colours rather than it all being one one neat colour you don't want that it's much nicer if they blend a little bit on the paper and then just taking a, a small brush what I'm going to be doing is just creating some grassy grassy stems so I'm just going to come up and just put in a few stems coming up and then I'm going to use a palette knife and just scratch through this is um, something that we did in the last course when we were making sort of little grass verges and banks. And just getting a few, put a little bit of brown in there actually, couldn't we? Actually, just to make it look a bit more like a sand dune, I might just get a little bit of, let's put a few browns in there as well. Just a little bit, make it show up a little bit more against the sea in the back. Make it quite random and then I'm going to scratch through in a second while it's wet. What I'm going to do is just take my palette knife and scratch through to get a few marks which break it up quite nicely. sand dune in the foreground and that's a nice little simple seascape that I hope you'll have a go at okay well I've dried this off taken off the tape and everything which obviously makes it look much much better I hope you have a go it's a nice little simple seascape um, look at the sparkle on the sea which is always very uplifting and have a go at trying different ways of putting the wax on to get different effects this is very useful if you like to paint outside um, much much easier than trying to use masking fluid I'm just going to recap on the ones I showed you earlier this is very similar but this time I put some land in the distance using the Payne's grey or you could use a different shade of blue or purple would look really nice this one is um, using some black paint to do some jagged rocks and here I put a little bit of land blowing with a straw and splattering and scratching through the techniques we did in the last course when we were looking at grass verges and trees if you do Facebook really be lovely if you could put some of your images on our Facebook page which the details will be coming up there's going to be um, a slideshow of some students work coming up as well 
people that have tried this technique in some of my classes that I've done. And I'm just going to show you next time what we're going to be doing. We're going to be having a little go at looking at making some more sort of stormy, choppy sea effects using the wax resist technique. Much colder, wintry colours. So hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Thank you.